Hey everybody, um, welcome to Chalkboard History. Today is going to be a, a special episode. Um, today I am with uh, Bobby Hargrove, who has worked for the Battle of Franklin Trust for many years, but really has worked for Carter House for even longer. So um, we've got about a half an hour. Who knows where this is going to go. So let's start with um, a little bit about you. What, when were you born? What year were you born and where? Born in Spring Hill uh, Doctor's Office, 1941. Wow. And then, but you lived in West Virginia for a while. Yeah, my dad was a sharecropper and wasn't making a lot of money. And his brother, who had been in the Navy, told him, said, um, they're hiring a lot of people in the coal mines country in Detroit also. And so my dad and his oldest brother moved to McDowell County, West Virginia. And um, I was about 18 months old, way I understood when we moved. So I grew up partly in West Virginia, McDowell County. But we always came home every every year because that's where all our people lived here, Columbia, Spring Hill, Franklin. And so it was a little bit different to come home and see, you know, things that's uh, here that I guess we all took for granted it'd always be here. Mm -hmm. So you came back to live permanently in this area when? 1957. And you got married in? 1960. 1960. So we went to high school together. Mm -hmm. uh, I intended to join the Navy when I got out of well, so Wait a second. You've been married 62 years. 62 years. 62 years. December 24th. Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve. Wow. I don't know. You know, you do things, you say... Why'd you do it? I don't know. Love caused a lot of things to happen to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so, so you got yeah. married, worked at Kroger for a long time. I've heard lots of Kroger stories. Yeah, yeah. well, I worked in Nashville, Jake's family cut about 17 years. Mm -hmm. But I've uh, never heard that. I've only heard that story once or twice, but I've uh, heard Kroger like 100 times. Oh, yeah, well, uh, I ended up spending about 27, 28 years at Kroger. Mm. Um, but I never wanted to be in management. I thought I did, but I was in management at, at, at Jake's family for a while. And uh, when it comes to Kroger, it's a different situation. You want to be in management, first thing you do is want to transfer. Mm -hmm. And I did not want to transfer. We moved here in 1966, and I did not want to go anywhere else. So, so, so get married, start working, start a family. So now, now we're going to talk about history. So before we get to the Civil War, let's talk about a little other history. Who's the first president you voted for? Um, well, what year did you first vote for president? Probably nineteen sixty-eight. Uh, sixty-eight was the first year. You I, I guess it was. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't get into voting when I was. 20, oh 20, boy! So who did you vote for in sixty-eight? Uh, oh boy. I can't think of the last name now. Anymore. Wallace. George Wallace. Yeah. George Wallace. George Wallace okay. came out. He he had all these great things he talked about. Um, of course, when you're young and people jump up and uh, want to change things, mm -hmm. you know, and they say all these good stuff that you listen to. Um, I like George Wallace's uh, little platform. and. Mm -hmm. I, I have no idea all the things he said now, but but it called me to vote the first time. Okay, so at that time, the Civil War has <clears throat> now been just over a hundred years. So I know you've told me you got involved in the Centennial. Right. So when did you get interested in John Bell Hood, and John Schofield, and the Tennessee campaign, the Battle of Franklin? Oh, that came a lot later. I I got interested in history. It probably about. 11 years old, 10, 11 years old. My grandfather used to tell some things when we come down here. Uh, they usually had a little family reunion on July 4th. And so, and of course my grandfather was getting old, you know, but his father had been in the war. So I, so I liked some of the stories he told. But 
every time I'd asked him what side we on, it was kind of like he changed the subject. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and so, why did they change the well, subject? And, and see, I didn't know that. I, I, because I'd asked my mother, why, why don't he tell us a little bit more? She said, but but I leave it up to him. So now we have to fast forward. So what did you find out about that about that later on? Oh, I was in probably in my twenties. Uh huh. And I've been around my grandfather now for the last 10, 12 years. But what, what side was he fighting on during the war? Federal well, side. Well, he was fighting on the federal, federal side. Federal cavalry of all things. Uh-huh. Out of Williamson County. Out of Williamson I couldn't believe County. it. Uh-huh. I mean, it was just unbelievable to sit there with all these people who who in the Confederacy, you know, and, and hear some of them. My uncle, he told about some of his family and all Confederates. So here I am, huh? I'm thinking we're all confederates. Uh-huh. Now all at once, when I'm grown, my grandfather says, nah, you know how you hum around, you don't come out and say everything you want to say like me and you're talking about? Yeah. Hum around with it. Find yeah. my grandfather, he says. Well, he said he fought uh, on the U.S. side. I said, oh, it can't be. You're just pulling her leg. I mean, you know, but he did. We but found did. it out. We found it out. Just, just recently, Joanna found the roster for the 5th Tennessee Cavalry Company H, which was out of Williamson County. Mm-hmm. But see, my grandfather, sometime he would he would use a little term. He'd say it didn't matter what color uniform he had on when you came home. There were a lot of places you were not a welcome hero. And he said, so the best thing to do is put your uniform up, bear the hatchet, and move on. Mm-hmm. But I didn't know what all that meant. So, so let's, <laughs> let's get into um, to more recent years. We okay. met, um, I don't remember exactly when, but it was before I moved here. And I came here, we came here in 05. But I know I met you several times thereafter. But let, let's talk about, the, now here's, we're going to get into some really good stuff. So, okay. so, so you worked at Carter House and I worked at Carnton. So tell everybody who never lived through all that we went through, what were those days and weeks like when the Battle of Franklin Trust was being created? What do you remember? Well, the biggest thing I remember, of course, you know, I went work up there, uh, volunteered for a long time. And, um, and the Carter House had a set way of doing things, and Carton was kind of off limits to everybody. To, to a certain extent. And um, um, as far as friendliness, I think we gave friendliness, but uh, when the trust was brought up, everybody kind of got nervous. Mm-hmm. Said, yeah, here we go. We're going to have a trust that's going to oversee both places. And they said, no, that's not going to happen. You know, I mean, here we go old school again. Not going to happen. But as as we got into more about it, I met you, and I heard your uh, little talk a couple times. And that the funny thing was, one day when something was said about parking on a hill, uh, and when you left, it said, "No, we're not going to do that." And what are you going to do? I said, "Well, I'll park up or start with, but I'm going to tell you where where he wants it done or not." And where you want to do it or not, he, he's going to end up being a boss. I want to tell you, I can, I can see that coming. He's going to end up being our boss. So uh, I want to get along with him, and I want to stay here, and I, I'm going to do what he tells me, unless it's just something way off of my bearings, what I like to do. But, so at the same time that the trust is being created, we had started to save sections of the battlefield. So, right, right. you know, there was the, the one a lot of people probably remember and will look, never forget is the Pizza Hut. Right. So that was saved in 2005. Um, and then Eastern Flank, which was out, uh, adjacent to Carnton, was saved. That was big because that right. was 112 acres. And right. then we started to save the various little tracts along Columbia Avenue close to Carter House. So tell us what, how that impacted you and, and, and how important it was to you to see that ground not just saved but to be reclaimed and to see these buildings like pizza places and strip malls torn down. 
Yeah, and, and it's hard to it's hard to visualize what can be. Uh, you know, I, I got into that way before I moved to Franklin by being in part of the centennial. In fact, Franklin was my first event, hundredth anniversary. And after then I you know, I got interested in things and my uncle lived here he introduced me to Fort Granger when you couldn't hardly get into it and I got all excited and I told my wife, I said, uh, boy, I wish we could buy that. I wish the city could buy it and clean it up, but I couldn't get nowhere with the city. So I went to the bank, of course, it's a long story short, uh, I wanted to borrow the money. I was going to buy a Fort Granger myself and uh, it was $1,000 an acre, which was high. It's that time. Well, that's cheap today. <laughs> yeah. So, 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 so by saving uh, Fort Granger were in the 1990s, but not cleaning it up, just saved it was a good step. Mm -hmm. Because, see, I'd go on reenactments, and we'd talk about where we was at, just little places or big places. Why ain't Franklin doing something? Why, why, why is Franklin kind of hold back on things I said, because they got the rodeo, and that's the big thing they wanted, was the rodeo and the county fair. That's all the city really wanted. Okay, so so getting so by the by the early 21st century, I'll, I'll list three things. So put aside Pizza Hut. Domino's came down. Right. Then the old school gymnasium came down. That yeah. was in 2016. And then the flower shop and the, the other building just south of Carter House. What did you think when you saw those come down? Uh, that I was dreaming. I mean, you know, we talked about it for years. I'm sure people talked about it before my time. But I actually get to live to see that happen after all these years. Just hard to come up with words, you know, mm -hmm. except I was excited. I, by that time, I could go to um, Gettysburg or where we was going, the place that ran out. And I said, hey, boys, we got Franklin, you know, come see What's happening in Franklin that never happened before. And you get to give tours of the Carter House and you get to talk to people from all over the country. Yeah. Still all these years later. And now there's no Pizza Hut, no Domino's, no school gymnasium. Maybe we'll live long enough to see a new visitor center at Carter House. Well, that'd be great. Wouldn't that be great? It'd be great. I'm telling you, it's just, you know, um, when you see those things happen and then you get to be a part of it. It's not like, as I joke, Mary, sometime we're coming up Columbia Avenue, and she said, you got some traffic behind you, you need to speed up. I said, but I'm doing a hoorah thing. You know, I'm looking both sides of the road, and I'm thinking about the guys there on November 30th, and I'm thinking about what happened to them, and then in the years after, uh, reclaiming things that we didn't get done. And thankfully that some people uh, had a vision for the Carter House, but the state had to buy it. So isn't it interesting that when you think about, if you go from what your grandfather did, serving in the federal army, <laughs> right? Yeah. To, and he comes home, then the war is almost forgotten or it becomes really romantic. You get through the centennial, Franklin's all covered up. And we start to save ground, and more people are visiting Carter House, and more people are visiting Carter, and now we're managing Ripa Villa. That's where we're filming this. And isn't it interesting that there are still some people who just fuss? They, oh. just, they just fuss, and it's like that's all they've ever wanted to do, and they've never, they seem to have missed out on the fun that we've had, not just giving tours and, and working in this field, but saving this ground and saving this history. Why, why can't they? Why, why don't you think they can get over the hump? I don't know if it's um, jealousy that somebody has done something that they didn't want to do. Mm. Um, I always joked about that you could stand outside the door of some uh, company and you could hand people a $10 bill every time they come out. Okay, and they'd be happy. Then one morning you stand out there and you pass out a five dollar bill, and they fuss about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you gave me ten, you right. know. Mm -hmm. But you're giving somebody something. We're right. giving somebody something to come here to see it and visit with us. And when I get through with a tour, and I thank the people for coming, and I tell them I appreciate it, and you're the reason. 
you're part of the reason we're here. And right. We are. And those same people, not not the same ones, because yeah. it's always predominantly new people, and they're coming yeah. from all over the country. And, you know, it's not just people from Tennessee or right. from the South. It's people from the North. It's people from the West. It's people who have a genuine love of history. So one of the things that we've done through the years, and I don't know when we started this, because the first time you ever described this particular snack to me, I didn't know what you were talking about. <laughs> and and they're, they're sitting right in front of us. So why don't you introduce everyone to the delicacy known as... Well, you... Some people, uh, and it depends on which side of the Mason-Dixon line you're on. Mm-hmm. Uh, down in here, these people would call these Viennas. Viennas. But they're called Vienna, Vienna, Vienna sausage. Like Vienna, Austria. Yeah, yeah. Right. Viennas. And a lot of people eat these things. They're good. They, they're not, if you leave, the, don't read the ingredients, okay? Right. It's like bologna. Don't read the ingredients what it takes to make Now, bologna. what's better, Vienna sausages or potted meat? Oh, this right here. Oh, uh-huh. oh, potted meat. And and I grew up with potted meat too. I always joked on a Saturday if you really wanted a, like a steak, you couldn't afford a steak. You fix your mayonnaise on your bread. You put your potted meat on. Put a piece of cheese on it, man. That that's just you know it makes it even better. But I I quit eating potted meat a long time back. And you're supposed to not be eating these sausages because just about the time that uh, uh, we started uh, in the COVID. Uh, epidemic, pandemic. Yeah. You got sick and almost died. Had to have a heart attack along the way. Had to have a heart attack. Yeah, yeah, I don't. I almost guess. lost your leg. Then you had a heart attack. You're just like Hood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I I guess you could put it that way. So, maybe. so you recovered from the heart attack. You were gone for oh goodness, what nine months? Yeah, almost a about year. Nine months. And yeah. then Mary said you couldn't eat sausages anymore. But we've snuck them a few times at work, haven't we? Right. Yeah, kids yeah, smoking we have. cigarettes. At, we have. At, uh, I tell her not to eat them because they're not good for her. She said, but you eat them. I said, yeah, but I don't have a heart attack. Yeah. Well, we should eat some, don't you think? Yeah. yeah you got to open up. Yeah, First yeah. of all, you got to open your Coke. Yeah, I've got to open my Coke. Listen. This, this, this is my cup of coffee for morning, okay? This is high class. We even got gold trim on our paper yeah, plates. Okay. There we go. Oh, yeah. This, this right here is... What is it? We always say this This right here takes the cake. Mm-hmm. Now, we're not going to eat both at the same time because no, no, the way we, we, we do this is we have to share one. We'll do that. I think and I don't, good. in all the years that we've been eating these at Carter House, <laughs> I don't think anybody's ever joined us. No. They always have a terrible look on their face and then they run away. Yeah, uh, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the same. Uh oh, it's got water in it. That's all right. Man, that's. I'm going to tell you why we're doing this. You know where I got these? Mm-mm. I went to Food Lion just last night. Oh, no, that that one. Well, let's see. It is armor. Yeah. Okay. We, we can have it. I don't like that word, Food Lion. But well, that's because you worked at Kroger. Kroger, yeah, about 20, I think actually about 29 years. You said 27 earlier. Now you well, sound 20, like a Civil War veteran. Well, 20, I was in all these battles, yeah. and it turns out they weren't well, half of them. I, okay. 27 years I worked full time, and I retired. And I played with my little old farm out on Cars Creek Pike, but they built a new store on Columbia Avenue, and they wanted me to come back and help me in the meat department, so I went back. Oh, here we go. Here we go. We yep. See, we couldn't get through this without a meat story from yeah. Kroger. Yeah, oh, man. I uh, cut meat for 27. I went back for two years. All right, so I got also got your favorite hot sauce because yeah. this is the one you always. I was gonna get Louisiana hot sauce. I was gonna try and get Bulliard's hot sauce, but I gotta go to Piggly Wiggly to get that. So I had to get Texas Pete. So yeah, Texas Pete is start us up as hot as it can be. Have to put a little. Whoo, gosh, that's that's a big top on there, man. And we're doing this at what time is it? Eight forty-five in the morning. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, Come that on, don't I sound right, does it? Yeah, but here, but you know, uh, I need some of that hot sauce. Yeah, put some of that on there. Okay. Oh, uh, and we went to a don't re-enact- be cheap with it. Went to a reenactment one time down shallow. Oh, come on now, I need some more than that. There man, you go. There you man, go. Man, that stuff's not good for you. Yeah. You know that? That's like an amputated limb right there. <laughs> <laughs> not good for you, as they mm-hmm. say. Yeah. Now this is a delicacy. Isn't it? Oh yeah. Well, uh, here here you go. 
Part of me used to be, but part of me got where it got mm. grease in it. Uh, but that's the other good. delicacy for, here, for the South that's is, good right there. is sardines. Sardines are good. Should have had some sardines. Well, you didn't tell me to get any yeah. sardines. Yeah, well, and when we find out, let's see, this is a, uh, this is. This is usually yeah. how it goes. I start eating and Bobby's still talking. Mm. Mm. January, yeah. We should have had a, we should have had a small bowl of chitlins. Mm. That makes, that makes chitlin. Speaking uh, of January. Speaking of January, let's talk about a January many moons ago after the trust had started managing Carter House and it snowed. And what did we do that day? At Carter House, tell everybody what we did for about three or four hours. Well, we broke up the ice up to the log cabin, standing up there breaking up ice and trying to get it ready just to get cleared up and shoveling snow. You made a you made a statement. You said um, probably nobody's coming today, and I said, well, I wouldn't think anybody'd be out. And here come two people walking up the sidewalk. And where are they from? Minnesota. Minnesota. I said, I cannot believe it. I said, it must be your kinfolk. And he said, we want to do a tour. Well, and then and you gave me a tour. For you. Yeah, and we cleared the path all the yeah, way to the top the of the hill. We did. We did. We worked harder than the federal soldiers that day. <laughs> <laughs> like building the airport. Right? Mm-hmm. Oh, goodness. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of hot sauce. That wasn't even intentional. How to, how to burn you. You need some more? Yeah. All right, let's talk about one other fun subject. Okay. Let's talk about the first day at Shiloh. First day at Shiloh. <clears throat> well, See, you part, love to talk great. about first day at yeah, Shiloh. First day at Shiloh. What if I had said second day at Shiloh? It wasn't very good. Uh, it wasn't. But, but you well, got, wait a second. It wasn't okay. very good for who? Your grandfather fought on the federal side. Yeah, but his brother was on the Confederacy. Wow. That's the reason the family Do had... Do you think they spent Christmas that's reason, together? That's the reason some of the family had problems. See, my great-grandfather's brother was in the 24th Tennessee Infantry. Ooh. And they were in Shiloh. So literally, so, brothers on different sides. Yeah. It, they they had to be for a while. Now, the the brother in the Confederacy got captured after Muffetsburg, and then he was out. But my great-grandfather, named Laban Hartley, he, he stayed in to him. Uh, after the end of the war, they, I think they dismissed him at Pulaski, Tennessee. And then we found out just recently, the other great-grandfather, my brother, my grandfather married into the family, put another one in there, and then we found out there's a John Hargrove in the 5th Tennessee. I have not been able to find out for sure. What part of the county did he live in, your grandfather? Or <clears throat> that? Over around uh, uh, Flat Creek. That's over past Bethesda. And oh, so they lived right on the on Murray County, Williamson County, well, Murray County line. Because one of them, just recently. And almost where Marshall County comes in. Well, and that's where I finally found somebody in 20th Tennessee Infantry. I always want somebody 20, but I couldn't find it. And of course, you know, Christy does a lot of work. And she told me one day when I come to work, she said, guess what? I got another one of your ancestors, James Henson. Well, James Henson, my grandmother was a Henson. James Henson, Company D, 20th Tennessee. Yeah. I'm going to eat all these while mm -hmm. you're talking. Uh, but I think he gets captured before the end of the war, but, but he did. He was under Moscow Carter for a while. How about that? So first day at Shiloh is good, second day is bad. Yeah, and if you got to look, look at second day. <clears throat> Ha, ha, of course, you use the word if a lot, but if Buell hadn't arrived in the night and take his army out of it, and who was it? Uh, Lou, Wall, what, Lou Wallace. Yeah, he wrote that. Comes in on the other side, you know, here's 10, 15, 20,000 new boys, you know? Mm. Or, maybe the, or maybe Grant and Sherman just held on long enough. Well, maybe so. But. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you Speaking of Sherman, you. he's over. He's lurking over your shoulder. Yeah, I know. Right there. <laughs> uh, Remember uh, that time I asked you if you were going to drive in a car to San Francisco and had to spend the weekend and come back, and I gave you the option of who's in the oh. vehicle. I won't. We won't tell who the other oh. occupants of the vehicle were, but it was so bad he chose Sherman. Yeah, that, that, that gets bad. Then you, you just drive across the country with Sherman. Yeah, you, you do that every once in a while. Mm. 
the last you gave me, I couldn't come up with an answer for it. It was so terrible? Yeah, well, look at both of them. Both of them caused this war, you know. So, All right, so I would pick Sherman. So we've, t- we've picked Sherman. So we've <laughs> talked about the past. We'll keep doing this as long as, well, as long as we can. So what about the future? So what do you think? People come here 20, 30, 50 years from now. You know, you think about the centennial. That's now been almost 60 years ago. Wow. And think about how much has changed Change. just in the country, how much has changed in visitation to Civil War sites, the new things that are out there, the new things that people talk about. We've got a new statue in the square in Franklin, and the old one's still there. But what do you think... What do you think the landscape looks like for the average visitor at Carter House or Carton? Or, or if they're going to go to Gettysburg or Shiloh, what's it like in 50 years? Yeah, and that's a good question. Um, you made so many improvements, okay? And, and there's always room for more. It's like that building that sits down there that we don't like. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one we want to buy? Yeah, the one we want to buy. We're trying. And, uh, you know, if... And I, and I see the time coming with, that we'll get it, that we'll get that property. Um, and get a new visitor center. New visitor center, I think, will be a key uh, player in this, in this Battle of Franklin Trust because you're going to be able to have a, a nicer uh, visitor center, community center. Um, we got videos that's available now that, that I think maybe that we talk to some schools who, who do teach history a little bit and keep emphasizing on that this is important and especially get history taught back in school. Why, you know? do, you, why do you think it's important? Why do you think the Battle of Franklin, because <clears throat> we've talked about this a thousand different ways, but tell everybody why you think this is important. In well, your heart of hearts, why is this important? Um, it, it tells the story of people that, that were there that didn't, you know, frankly, they get a place in history, I don't think. But when you read about more and you study about the East and then you jump over in the western side of the country and you read about Shiloh and Muffetsboro and Fort Donaldson, you know, and you get a national park here and then. So here... Here's Franklin, and just a little short battle, 10,000 people. Uh, high rate of Confederate general to kill and wounded here. And yet, the documentary organization that, that's done a lot of things don't mention Franklin much. Mm-hmm. And they don't do much for Nashville either. And, and of course, when you look at it, Franklin didn't do much for remembrance of the war, just like Nashville didn't either. So why do you really think it's important? Because we're teaching them something that was left out. We're teaching them that this was an important day uh, and learn that uh, these boys gave all they had. And were they right or were they wrong or were they fighting for the right thing or not, when you put your life on the line, and, and they're mostly all American people, okay? Uh, and then we don't talk about it and we don't emphasize on what Franklin's about. Uh, I think we'll get left out, but I don't think we will because the trust has done such a great job on it. And you've been in leadership and you've seen it. And I've seen it, that things that we tried for years to get done didn't happen. So has it been fun? Uh, that's a good word. Has it been fun? No. Uh, has, has it been, been rewarding? Worth it. worth it. Yes, it's been worth it. Uh-huh. Uh, That's exactly how I feel because I think so many times people will come to me and say, oh, you have the greatest job in the world. It must be so much fun. And I'll say, you know, maybe there's a day or two that's just fun. Yeah. But for the most part, this is this has been work. This has been and, – and when you get attacked – and people are calling you names. You deal with COVID. You deal with somebody who has a heart attack. You have staff members that come and go. Board members change. City leadership changes. But it has all been worth it, hasn't it? You yeah. think you think those guys who were at Shiloh, 
<clears throat> and Murfreesboro, and Chattanooga, Chickamauga, Atlanta, and then end up here. What do you think will go through their minds if they could see what's happened in the last, you know, 10 years or so just with the preservation movement? I, th- I think they would be very happy with a remembrance of, of Franklin. And, um, and and when you look at where else has has people put in such an effort in the middle of town? Nowhere. 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 I and, mean, there there have been some. You know, Fredericksburg, Virginia has made some yeah. great strides. You know what organizations like the American Battlefield Trust have done are way beyond even what we're doing. But there there is really nothing. We've saved now close to two hundred acres of battlefield that both of us yeah. remember was either covered up or was being utilized as a as a golf course. Yeah, so, yeah. And people so, wouldn't believe it. And the the sad part about it was the opportunities that they had when things were reasonable were passed up. Sure. And now we're now we just signed a contract recently, our uh, preservation organizations, to buy another piece of battlefield, which is just south of Carter House, and it's less than an acre, and it's four million dollars. Yeah, it's just. I mean, it's terrible for. But that's what it's worth, and if that's what we have to pay. Well, and two, you got to look at, as you said, twenty years down the road. I go back just to briefly when Fort Granger was offered to me, uh, the, that the, the co-op we call co-op owned it and said, we want a thousand dollars acre. There's 12 acres in it that go down to the river and all. $12,000 at the <laughs> time that I wanted to buy that would have bought you a real nice house in town. That's what I paid for my house in 1967. So I'm 68, 69. Uh, I'm at the city or I'm going to the bank. I went to try to borrow the money. They almost throw me out. Uh, and then you look at it, Ten years past that, there's no thousand dollar acre in Williamson County. So we're we're we we down to the last couple minutes here. So okay, I think we I'm should probably. A bite here. Oh, you get a bite of that? <laughs> <clears throat> well, one of the people that we've known for well, I've known him for twenty years, and you've known him longer, Sam Gant. Yeah. A member of Save the Franklin Battlefield. Sam has supported the Battle of Franklin Trust um, yeah. as as long as there's been a trust, he passed away just a few days ago. And without getting into long conversation, because we don't have time about Sam, it has reminded me that there's a there's a finite period that all of us have. And yeah. we have to accomplish as much as we can while we're here, while while we have the ability to do it, while we kind of, you know, pull the levers of control. Yeah. So I want to thank you for everything you've done, because if you've never met this um, young man, you have missed out because he's a treat, because it's a, there's a genuineness here and a love of history that I know I share, which is why I think we have always had this common bond. There are people who say they love history, but until you work in it and until you work in a, yeah. in a, in a, in a visitor center with single bathrooms, <laughs> with not enough room, yeah. you know, whether we're going to play the film or not play the film and you're dealing with this and you're dealing with that day after day and you're shoveling ice and you're shoveling snow, you were, we were given tours in a house that didn't even have HVAC back in the, right. back in the early days. Right. We put air conditioning and heat in the house. So there is a, there's a commitment here that, well, it just doesn't exist in a lot of places. So I want to thank you. This has been great. Um, so, Bob Hargrove, mm-hmm. what's the final word? You've got about 15 seconds. Final words. Say the Frank Battlefield. There you go. Those are good words. All right, thanks. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Chalkboard history at its best right here. How about that? Not bad, I don't think. I don't know. You may have to touch up some stuff. <sighs>